Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be talking about different career paths for software developers or software engineers. Not only that, but I'm also going to be talking about different roles you can do within coding, within software development, and then two different kind of career paths that you can expect for progression in software development. Before we go any further though, make sure to hit that subscribe button for more tech and coding related videos. Also, shout out to some of these subscribers here. Thanks for your support, your questions, your comments, you know, just thank you. Okay, let's get started. If you are someone who is currently a software developer or aspiring to be one, there are going to be many opportunities that present themselves throughout your career. A lot of times these opportunities are almost a twofold. Part of you is going to be very excited and just want to take those opportunities. And the other side of you is going to be a little overwhelmed because there is so much potential and opportunities as well as different paths that you can take with your career. It can be in a positive way, an overwhelming thing just because of so many choices. But at the end of the day, this is a good problem to have. And the most important thing is having an understanding, a clear understanding of different career path options you can take. We're going to start by going through some different uh, career paths as far as coding and software development goes. And then I'm going to go into the career progression, starting from a junior developer and how you will progress your career up to senior and management level. Okay, let's start by looking at some typical software developer or software engineering job titles. The first one is front-end developer. A front-end engineer focuses on building the user interface for a website or application. They're responsible for the look and feel of a website and handling anything a user can interact with. They also do a ton more than this, but essentially everything that the user sees and interacts with that is handled by the front end engineer or developer. Whereas back end engineers work on the server side of things. This can include web services, database design, and integrating data feeds. So for example, a functionality that a backend developer would typically handle would be processing secure payments or processing uh, when people log in and update their passwords or make a new password, anything like that is handled by the backend. And then there is a mixture of both full stack engineer. This is someone who can do both the front end and back end equally as well, typically maybe stronger in one area than the other, but overall strong in both areas. Next, we have mobile app developers. These are the people who build software for smartphones, tablets, and other mobile devices. This could be Android and or iOS. Next on the list, we have a graphics engineer. These are engineers that use 2D and 3D digital platforms for gaming and video production. Another type of software developer or software engineer is a data engineer. They're responsible for storing, organizing, managing, and analyzing information. Data engineers find useful insights from data to help make informed business decisions. Another type of engineer is a DevOps engineer. This is something I've always, as a side note, wanted to do and hope to kind of get into one day, but we will see. Uh, DevOps comes from development and operations. So they are someone who facilitates, oversees, and expedites the process of code release or deployment of applications. Also, they do much more than that, but I'm trying to sum it up for you so you have a clear, insightful understanding. And then if something sparks your interest, you can kind of dive in further. And last on the list, we are going to talk about security engineer, which is essentially what it sounds like. They are someone who designs solutions to safeguard software or networks from hackers or cyber threats. So as you can see, there is a ton of different roles within the tech industry, within software development, not just the tech industry, because there's many more roles than that. And beyond what I just listed, there are so much more. That being said, I want to take a moment uh, to really highlight that don't feel so much pressure or stress to choose one and that's the way you have to go forever. You can really start in one area and then kind of go down and specialize and or you can start in one area and maybe when you get a new job or a new role comes up, you will get into a different type of software development. I know for myself, I started in QA and then I moved to backend slash frontend, mostly backend and then more frontend. And now being on the consulting side of things, I work with whatever comes my way from mobile, front end, back end, um, you know, even if there's a little bit of DevOps required, really anything that comes my way, I just have to embrace, which I really like, 
but um, it's also one of those things that it's you become a, a generalist instead of being a specialist and specializing in one specific area. But I think that's one of the best things about tech and being a software developer is there is unlimited amount of choices you can take. Okay, now that we have a good understanding of the different types of roles out there for software developers, let's talk a little bit about career progression. Bear in mind, before we even start, every company has its own process, its own career growth path. So what I'm laying out for you right now is typical, but maybe the company you work for might be a little different, but it will hopefully give you a clear understanding as to what you can expect as or from your career path. When you are first starting out in your career, you will start out as a junior software developer. I know junior, but it's actually a good word because you're only going to be junior once in a software developer role and progress from there. And when you are a junior developer, you essentially will be working in whatever specific area you are that we just listed, whether it be front or back end, and you'll be working to meet client or product needs. So if you are working for a client, an external client, you'll be working to meet their needs. But if you are working at a company that is internal and product based, such as, um, let's see, what would be a good one? Say, say Google um, or Facebook or Instagram then you're building their product versus if you are working for an agency where you are building someone else's product. You will be reporting to your team lead typically, which um, in most cases, a team lead uh, manages a few junior developers uh, or mid-level developers. And if you have questions or concerns, you go to them for help. During your time as a junior developer, this is really the time where you can soak up or should soak up all the information that comes your way, ask as many questions as possible. Uh, many companies, let me say, all the good companies will encourage you to really use this time to be a sponge and learn as much as possible. Learn the best practices, ask all the questions you can to your team lead. And the team leads at this point in your career are expecting you to ask questions, expecting you to make mistakes and learn from them. Once you have been a junior developer for typically a few years, I would say typically two to three years, but every company varies and it just really depends on, on your progression. You might progress really fast and become a senior developer way quicker, or maybe you uh, progress at a slower pace and it takes you a little bit longer. It doesn't matter, but I would say two to three years is an average from when you get promoted from a junior developer to a senior developer. During this time, you will be able to teach more junior developers or engineers the skills that you have learned. Uh, you will become someone's essentially, I don't want to say mentor, but someone who will ask you the questions. Maybe you will do some uh, program pair, paired programming and someone's learning from you specifically. You kind of take on the role now of instead of becoming the mentee, you are the mentor. You're using your skills uh, to help others and show other junior developers the ropes. Typically when you are a senior developer, a senior engineer, you still don't have it all figured out. You're still, I mean, you never do, but you're still learning and gathering information, but you're taking on larger tasks. You're taking on more difficult tasks that might take longer and are just more difficult in nature to do. And because of that, you're still learning and growing quite a bit. Of course, to pay with uh, becoming a senior developer versus a junior developer really increases, which is another plus if you ask me. Okay, so after you have been promoted from a senior developer or engineer, the next step in your career is typically a tech lead or team lead, I should say. And this is you have a lot more responsibility. You are responsible for a team of individuals, a team of developers, and really how they are developing and also to you're really responsible for how the development process is going from beginning to end. You're typically required to report the development progress to company stakeholders and also provide input into the decision-making process. Okay, so once you have become a tech lead and have done that for a few years, the next role that you would be promoted to is team manager. You have now hit the managerial level. It is exciting. You're quite a few years into your career and you just finished becoming a or the last role you would have been in is the tech leads. You're already used to managing a group of developers, but I'll share with you a little bit how it differs. When you're a team manager, you're really responsible for the well-being of the entire team, but also to overseeing their career progression. So a lot of time team managers are the ones who have 
the power or responsibility, I should say, to promote others uh, below them and encourage them to continue growing and developing their career. And from a team manager, the next step up is a technical architect. This is something I really, really am excited to be one day. I hope to be a solutions architect um, and kind of go that career path too. And essentially what a technical architect is, is you're expected to overlook the entire architecture and technical design. You'll be required to build processes for the team and provide technical leadership. This role will also include looking into ways to scale systems and best continue to grow. For a lot of technical architects, they work very closely with clients as well, or solutions architects do anyways. And what this really looks like is being able to both work very closely from the client side of things, the business side of things, but also to work very closely with the technical side of things. I have met uh, solutions architects that code and some that don't. So definitely it's not a requirement at that point in your career to be coding still but a lot of them do just to keep up with their coding skills and not lose that skill and the next one the one we all want we all strive for is cto chief technology officer having that c-suite uh, c level on your title is just like it's goals for a lot of people or for me anyways it's goals and of course, a CTO is the head of an organization's technological needs. So they oversee uh, employee technology to improve products and services for their clients. And as I mentioned, this is often considered the pinnacle or the top tier of your tech career. So as you can see, there is a lot of opportunity and a lot of exciting career progression that comes with being a software developer. One of the things that I really like is as you progress in your career, you have the option anyways to have a bit more balance of both working with clients and the business team, as well as continuing to build your technical skills. Whereas you are more junior, you're focusing on just ramping up and developing those technical skills to begin with. But of course, even the career paths that I just listed or the career path I just listed is very traditional or typical for a software developer, but it is definitely not the only way. I have had friends who are software developers who do a pivot into project or product management, who decide to kind of go fully the more business route and the skills they learned uh, throughout their time as a software developer are still very valuable and used uh, quite a bit because they are working in the tech industry and speaking to uh, developers or people who need to have a strong understanding of what's going on on the tech side. I hope that gives you further insight and a clear insight as to the career path and progression that a software developer typically takes. Let me know in the comments other videos you would like me to make and make sure if you haven't already to hit that subscribe button for more tech and coding related videos. Thanks everyone.